Is there a way of stopping the thoughts that constantly keep coming to us? Can we learn to control our thoughts? Of course, we often think about the things that we don't want to think about. We often restrain our thoughts, change them, and replace them with other thoughts. Hence, we can only control our thoughts by controlling our desires. So the question really is, how can we change our desires? The answer is, through the environment. I'm Hannah Camilo Ruaza, taking up Master of Arts, major in Physical Education, assigned to the topic about adoptive control of thought, rational, or act R, by John Robert Anderson. Let us first define the terms that we may encounter during our discussion. First, cognition, name for the mental activity of processing information about the world around us and deciding what to do with that information. Second, adaptive, ability to change, also describe action, skills, behaviors that human develop and used to perform basic skills and be able to cope with situations. Third, controlled processes. Thought, processes in the mind that require a great deal of a person's mental resources. Fourth, rational, refers to being of sound mind and having the ability to reason. Being rational means using conscious thought Processes to solve problems. Adaptive control of thought, rational, or act R, theory, was developed by John Robert Anderson, a professor of psychology and computer science, expertise, cognitive neuroscience, cognitive science, computational and learning science. He is interested in understanding how children learn mathematics and hopeful to build a computer simulation, child learning algebra, that will be able to reproduce the learning achievement of a child and give information about where the difficulties might be in learning mathematics. Anderson is interested to study mathematical psychology, so he worked with famous mathematical psychologist, Gordon Bower. But he informed Anderson that mathematical psychology was dead, so he should go to artificial intelligence. At that time, artificial intelligence was growing and study field and Anderson essentially discovered in the methods of that particular field an approach that one could adopt and adopt to understand human cognition and particular deals with issue of learning. Cognitive architecture refers to both a theory about the structure of the human mind and to a computational abstract of such theory used in artificial intelligence and computational cognitive science. Human cognitive architecture provide a generic framework of the information, processing stages that learners use to encode, store, and modify information. Also, specify the strategies that the learners use to transfer information in and out of the stores. The implication for education and psychology. As the world begins to utilize more on technology in the field of education and psychology, it is important to understand the dynamics between technology and human mind. The implication on artificial intelligence, the idea of cognitive architecture may seem foreign to many of us, but the fact that it can be boiled down to a theatrical structure that offers a window into the human mind is incredible. Comparison between Anderson's 
theory of cognitive architecture to adoptive control of thought, rational, acts, fundamental processes. All knowledge begins as declarative information. Procedural knowledge is learned by making inferences from already factual knowledge. A theory of higher level cognition. The basic element of the theory net is simplification of the central element that represent the fundamental law concerning relationship between activation of declarative memory nodes and activation and test rate in procedural memory. While adoptive control of thought rational or act R is an elaboration of the act theory or the original act theory and builds up HAP, a model of semantic memory proposed by Anderson and Bower. It focuses on the memory processes, distinguishes among three types of memory structures, the declarative memory, procedural memory, and working memory. And the implication of ACT-R in education are embedded in the modeling program language. As such, it can be used to model learners to understand what difficulties they might have. The goal of act R is to understand the structure of higher level cognition with a particular focus on mathematical problem solving. This has led to focus on what are called unified theories of cognition. A unified theory is a cognitive architecture that can perform in detail a full range of cognitive tasks. It takes the form of a computer simulation which is capable of performing and learning from the same task that subjects in our laboratories work. Focus on analyzing brain imaging data. Brain imaging data is to get information about what is happening under the hood or sabihin na natin kung ano talaga yung nangyayari sa utak ng tao habang gumagawa sila ng isang task or as people perform complex tasks. This information is being used to help design instruction that will enable students extend their knowledge beyond the procedures that are being taught. What is adoptive control of thought, rational, or act R? It is a theory dealing primarily with memory structure a way of specifying how the brain itself is organized using the eight modules, a cognitive model predicted neuroimages. It integrates theories of cognition, visual attention, and motor movement. It has been applied successfully to models higher level cognition phenomena, such as working memory, scientific reasoning, and skill acquisition, to name but a few. Eight models of act are require increase of expenditures, what we can track with FRMI data is essentially signals of that increase of metabolic expenditure so we can essentially track when particular component cognitive system are involved. What are the ACT-R modules? These modules is an overloaded term in ACT-R. Each module is essentially an independent component and it is the modules which provides the functionality of the overall system. The ACT-R cognitive architecture shows the mapping the brain regions and the color modules corresponds to the color squares in the brain. The eight modules in ACT-R. First, the manual control. Second, the vocal control. Third, the oral perception. Fourth, the visual perception. Next, problem state, goal state, declarative, memory, and procedural module. Manual control and vocal control is under the performance or performed action. Manual control, this command directs the motor module how to output actions to the world. Vocal control provides a model with the ability to speak. Speak command in, is dependent on the text to be spoken. Visual perception and oral perception is under input, wherein you're able to identify objects. It shows the what and where system. The what represent the object in the visual scene, 
while the where buffer holds the object's location. Again, the what represent the object in the visual scene, while the where buffers hold a object location. Where, location, and what information visual. In oral perception or input, it gives the model an auditory. It is not different from visual perception to what and where system. There are four modules in performing cognitive operation. These are declarative memory, goal state, problem state, and procedure module. Procedure module contains rules that can be fired up on the content. Declarative memory designed to mimic human memory. These are equation to easily retrieve memory. Goal state, the simplest module, it provides the system goal buffer that is that is typically used to maintain a model's current task state. It is keeping track of goals and intentions. And lastly, the problem state. It was a limited to supplementary motor area. This state is given the following encoding the problem, planning the solution, solving the problem, and responding with an answer. Adaptive control of thought, rational, act or model. A metaphor worth understanding. The physical architecture yields a neurological architecture, which yield a cognitive architecture and that's what the model is about. A theory of cognitive architecture. Comparison between declarative knowledge or declarative memory to procedural knowledge or procedural memory. Declarative knowledge is knowing a piece of information, knowing you know you can do something. It can be declared in conscious expression. Procedural memory is an element responsible for knowing how to do things. It's unconscious, non-declarative. It's a long-term memory, memory of motor skills, such as riding a bike, catching a ball, and typing. Working memory, cognitive system with a limited capacity that is responsible for temporarily holding information available for processing, or also called short-term memory that focuses on memory in action. Watch this short video clip to better understand working memory. Take a look at the number on your screen. Unless that number means something to you, your brain is already in the process of forgetting it. That's because short-term memory is a brief holding place for memories that have no long-term importance or emotional connection, but which might be useful in the immediate future. Like when you get the check at a restaurant. You only need to remember the total long enough to figure out the tip. A perfect job for your short-term memory, which lasts for no more than 30 seconds. So, how much was that bill we just showed you? Chances are, you remember. But what about that 10-digit number we showed you earlier? Not only are those numbers outside your short-term memory's 30-second window, but there's also a cap on how much information can be stored there, usually around four or five items, which is why your brain still remembers this, but not this. The good news is you may be able to improve your short-term memory. All it takes is a dash of inspiration. To see what we mean, try to memorize this 10-digit number. Time's up. We'll give you a few seconds to let that sink in. Enjoy these elephants. Now, can you remember those numbers? Chances are you did, thanks to a technique called chunking, a simple tool we all use nearly every day. Whether it's your social security number, credit card, or even your phone number, chunking longer number sequences into bite-sized pieces makes them much easier to remember. 
Simply adding a couple of dashes into a 10-digit number causes your brain to treat it as fewer items, putting less strain on your short-term memory. Let's go back to the ACT-R model. The working memory is the active buffer between the sensory register or the senses and the long-term memory or LTM. In LTM, there are at least two forms of memory storage concerned with declarative, what something is, facts, and procedural, how to do something. According to Anderson, procedural memory consists of sequences of action based on pattern matching that is similar to computing instruction, such as if then, if this happens, then do that. Declarative memory, on the other hand, holds the factual knowledge and any relevant association and context. This showed the knowledge with action, thinking and doing, theory to practices. That's all. Thank you for listening. Don't hesitate to share your thoughts, comments, or questions below. God bless!